Hello! Welcome back to Sipology Blog. Um, I have a timer this time. I am determined to make this video under 15 minutes so I can put it on YouTube without screwing around and trying to edit it with the, um, the crummy um, video editing program I have. Anyway, so we're in the midst of Rye Fortnite um, and we have two Ryes here. Both of them are 100% Rye. Um, and both of them are the products of micro distillers, sort of. More on that later. First off, we have Old George Whiskey, uh, which is a rye whiskey, as I said before, um, from um, Grand Traverse Distillery in Traverse City, Michigan. Um, I would highly recommend, if you're in that area, you know, on vacation, going up to the cabin or the cottage in the summertime, uh, stop in there. Um, very nice guys. Um, they'll take you around. You can get a tour. You can touch the still if you like. Um, just uh, have a blast. Um, and this is their rye whiskey. This is the first whiskey uh, they have released. Um, and um, so while it airs out a little bit, so some uh, preliminary words, not too long, on rye whiskey. Um, in the early days of the 13 colonies, which would go on to become these United States of America, uh, rum was the drink of choice. Um, what would happen is um, the British had many colonies in the Caribbean that produced sugar. A byproduct of producing sugar is molasses. Um, and that molasses would get shipped up to New England, where it would be, let me center myself here, it would be uh, fermented and then distilled. And the bottle's sort of getting cut off here. There we go. There we go. I'll win that cinematography Oscar yet. Um, the molasses would get shipped up to New England, be fermented and distilled there in New England. There were many rum distilleries in New England. Um, but after the revolution, those ties with the Caribbean were cut. And so, um, whiskey became the drink of choice and remember then again the American wine industry was not had not yet gotten off the ground beer was hard to do um, just because of the climate and um, you know before refrigeration beer was hard to ship anywhere um, and even imported wines would go bad uh, on the long journey um, across the Atlantic anyway so rye whiskey uh, became a drink of choice because rye grew very easily in the new areas um, that many of the European settlers were moving into. Now, Maryland, Pennsylvania had their own styles of rye historically. Um, now, most macro distilled, as I call them, um, ryes are made in Kentucky. And they are, uh, for lack of a better term, barely legal. Um, they are made from about 50 one percent, just a little bit over 51 percent rye um, in the uh, distiller's beer that is distilled to produce the whiskey, um, and that's and it and that's close to the minimum allowed by law. A bourbon, you'll recall, is at least 51 percent corn. Uh, so, just you know, use that as a point of comparison, I guess. Um, so, but both of these are 100 percent, and I think it's Old George. Or 100% rye. I think this Old George said some time to air out here. Old George doesn't carry an age statement, but it's about three years old. I learned that from the distiller. Said they is one of the first things they distilled when they got when they first got set up, and they've been in business for about three or four years now. So there you go. Um, lots of tropical fruit, lots of sweetness, um, mango, papaya, uh, pineapple. Mandarin orange. Um, the fruit flavors carry on to a uh, carry on in the palate. One thing that really stands out about this is for young whiskey, it's very full body. Um, I think it has a lot of good potential because this full body has a lot of good potential. Um, in the future when it gets older, when Old George gets old, um, or actually it's Old George, 
apologize, no D. Um, but when old George gets older, um, this has the potential to be a really, really excellent rye whiskey. Um, I hope they're putting enough back to release it without, you know, um, without me having to get, you know, a, um, a second mortgage for my house to buy a bottle. Um, I get a little bit of brown sugar, which I guess uh, comes from the barrel notes, sort of, I guess. Mm. A lot of burn in the finish. Not much else, just burn, which is not bad. Um, this is Old George whiskey is bottled at 93 proof, which I think was a smart thing to do for them. Um, A lot of young whiskeys are barreled at 80 proof, uh, which is the minimum, and I think it kind of, I don't know, for lack of a better word, neuters them. You can't get much of the flavors um, that you can get out of a higher proof whiskey. You know, some people complain about higher proof whiskeys, um, you know, something that's a hundred that's 100 proof, like Whistle Pig. They go, oh, it's too hard for me. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with adding ice or with adding water, for that matter. It doesn't make you less of a man. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, neuter you to do that. Just think of it as whiskey concentrate, you know? Add a little bit of water until it's at, at, a, um, at a strength that you can, you can enjoy. Simple as that. All right, enough of that sidebar. Old George whiskey, I think, is very good for what it is, um, and that is a young rye whiskey. It's okay for sipping. I think it would be really excellent for mixing. Uh, one of my favorite um, rye drinks, drinks that uses rye whiskey, um, would be perfect for Old George. Um, it's my own version of a rye highball. Fill a um, Fill a highball glass with ice, um, or you know maybe about two thirds full with ice. Uh, put a couple ounces of rye whiskey in there, uh, preferably something young, not anything that would be sort of on a sipping whiskey caliber. And then um, and then pour in a f and then uh, fill the glass with ginger ale, and then put a few um, shots of orange bitters on top. There's your rye highball. Great, refreshing, but very flavorful drink. Um, and as my friend Timothy said, you know, young ryes are made for ginger ale or ginger ale is made for mixing with young ryes. Very nice. Okay, we're really running short on time. So, um, squirt of water. There you go. Now about whistle pig. Whistle Pig Farms is a micro distilling outfit located in Shoreham, Vermont. Um, and sort of led at this time by Dave Pickerel, who has signed this bottle of Whistle Pig. Um, and Dave Pickerel, for many years, was master distiller at Maker's Mark. Uh, when they parted ways, he hooked up with the Whistle Pig people. Um, and. Um, now, when you're a micro distiller, you have a problem. You can't, um, the problem is if you want to make aged spirits like whiskeys or rums or brandy, um, there's a lag between the time when you distill it and the time when you're able to make money off it. Um, and that lag can be anywhere from four to 10, 12 years. Uh, and that's a long time to wait if you're a business person um, that, that's a long time to wait to make money. So, what do you do in the meantime? What Grand Traverse Distillery has done is they've made a number of vodkas, um, including an all wheat and an all rye vodka. Um, I've had the two. There are subtle taste differences, but in the end it's vodka. It's supposed to be flavorless, and it pretty much is. Um, or you can bottle whiskeys that are made by someone else. This is what Whistle Pig has done. And a few other distilleries, uh, micro distilleries, have done this too. Like High West 
and Templeton. Now, oh man, really distinctive nose. Now, that can be a bit of a trap because your customers get used to the stuff you're selling that's made by someone else. Um, and so when your own stuff starts coming on the market, you get scared. You think, well, maybe they won't like the stuff that we're making ourselves. Um, because it'll be younger than the stuff we've been selling. It, it may have a completely different taste profile from what we were selling before. Um, so it can be a trap. Not that there's anything wrong with an independent bottler. Nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, there's a great tradition in Scotland of independent bottlers. But um, it, can be, it can be dicey. And then there are also unscrupulous micro distillers who, cl who make it sound like that they've distilled something themselves when it's really just someone else um, doing it. Oh, but this Whistle Pig is really, I think, a great whiskey. And it's not just because this is the third time I've attempted to um, do this tasting today. Um, it's really much, much more complex than Old George whiskey. Um, it's not to say that it's incredibly complex by bourbon standards or by the standards of something like Sazerac 18-year-old uh, rye or a Van Winkle Family Reserve rye. It's, it's not at that level. But you get a lot more barrel characteristics, char. I get a lot of old-fashioned candy flavors, which is something I got a lot out of um, the Four Roses 2009 limited edition single barrel, barrel strength release. Um, that's a mouthful. You know, people complain on straightbourbon.com about all the abbreviations, but do you really want to spend your life saying Four Roses 2009 single barrel, barrel strength limited release? No. You know. Back to the whistle pig. A lot of old fashioned candy, like I said, saltwater taffy, cotton candy, um, like bubble gum. You remember, like the Bazooka Joe bubble gum, where it'd be just sort of generic bubble gum flavor. Get a lot of that out of this. Okay, we're, run we're running really short on time right now. Um, finish on the whistle pig. A lot of heat, but also a lot of wood. Um, this is a ten this is ten years old, whereas this is no age statement, probably about three or four years old. It's ten years old, there's a lot more depth to it, a lot more woody uh, characteristics. Um, but is a lot lighter um, in body than the old George. These are both excellent whiskeys. However, I want to briefly compare them to, there we go, it's my bottle so I can um, do that. Oh, by the way, I borrowed this Old George whiskey from Brad in uh, Dearborn, Michigan. Thank you very much, Brad. I really, really appreciate you letting me borrow this bottle to do this review. So, and no water, we don't have time. Um, so, to compare, I have some Rittenhouse Rye, which we reviewed last week. Um, it's Kentucky's uh, distilled rye, which is bottled and bond. Um, it's an old Pennsylvania name, though. Just wildly different than these two. Um, I'd say it's different stylistically. There's my timer. It's different stylistically as like rye and weeded bourbons would be. A lot of herbal notes in the nose, um, oregano, tarragon, even a little bit of like earthy cumin seed or coriander seed even. Um, all right, well, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this review and I hope it has uh, been informative and fun. All right, take care. Peace out.